and welcome to Data with Art, a party line talk show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and today is MCK Friday, and I am joined by the Grand Chief, Joe Norton. Welcome to the show, Joe. How are you? I'm pretty darn good. Been busy, I guess? Quite. <laughs> so I know uh, we I have some topics, and uh, it's supposed to be a general uh, uh general update into what's been happening and there's been a lot going on i keep track on all those press releases yeah. and uh, just sort of know so i guess i just wanted to ask you is there any comment uh with regards to the press release uh uh by the uh 207 longhouse and the haudenosaunee people regarding the haudenosaunee symbols um not being used by mm-hmm. indian act councils is there anything uh anything new on that one no uh i sent back a message uh, I think it was to the to the radio station K103 and I just said basically that I, I don't want to engage in a, uh, a debate a dialogue via the media uh, I was asked the same thing by um, Yuri was it and the Eastern Door you know and whatever so I said no if Kennedy or whoever from the Eastern uh, from the um, 207 Longhouse wants to talk about that then, you know, let's sit down, let's talk it face-to-face. So you're looking at this as an opportunity maybe to open up some doors sure. to have some good dialogue, maybe, you know, to start? I'll say this. I'm glad it caused controversy because maybe now people will say, okay, let's talk about it. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever the meeting takes, whatever shape it takes, as long as there's dialogue. Right now, there's nothing. And and, and that, like you said, that might yeah. be just what, what's needed. Um, last week, you had a visit from the Federal Minister of Justice, um, who actually came to Gunawage, which I was quite surprised at. Yeah. It was very... Um it was unexpected, let's put it that way, simply because of the fact that... Uh, oh, so you were just as surprised as everybody yeah, I mean, else? I okay. Mean, uh, within within uh, a couple of days' notice, the minister was on his way. So it was an interesting conversation we had in terms of talking about um, uh, Ganawaga's jurisdiction in gaming. We also talked about our, um, our justice system and the Justice Act that we had passed, and that uh, we want to enhance that more than ever before to hear more cases here in Ganawage. That means appointing judges, not justices of the peace, which of, um, has, uh, has not, is not going to happen anymore anyway. You know, under 107 of the Indian Act, there's this procedure which a justice of the peace or justices of the peace can be appointed to, uh, to sit in a court in, in, in our community. So they've, uh, they've done away with that, and that's fine. So we have to replace it with something else because we do have a court, you know, and um, we need full-fledged judges, Mohawk judges ourselves to be able to do that. So that was part of the discussion, and he took note of that and basically said, okay, we will do a follow-up. And there was a, a suggestion that we have, uh, uh, that he would uh, organize a, a tri tri-party discussion, federal, provincial, and Ganawage, to talk about uh, the jurisdiction in Ganawage in terms of starting with, um, with, the, um, with, with the gaming side of things. Because we explained to them everything that we have here, what we do, and, you know, for over 20 years, we've been involved in this, and, and, um, and, and the, both Canada and Quebec basically have said, you know, this is sort of in the gray zone, if you want to call it that, and, uh, or at times, the uh, Quebec government has said it's illegal. So that's the kind of uh, talk that's out there. So sometimes you have difficulty doing business with, you know, with uh, certain uh, certain uh, entities that you want to do business with. You know, so that's creating problems. So we need to uh, we need to work uh, at that with the federal government, with the Minister of Justice, to clear that up as soon as possible. So let me ask a question. Um, what do you think was the reason why he wanted to reach out and, and move quickly? Are they trying to make a statement? or what, what, what do you think it is? I mean, you know, right away my mind goes all over. So yeah, they're, up well, to, they're up to no good. I'll put it that way, you know? It's, um, it was surprising. But then on the other hand, if you look at the situation out of which the, new, the newly appointed minister became the minister, and that is with if you want to call it the firing uh, removal 
of the former minister, Jody Wilson-Raybould, you know, yeah. under much controversy. We didn't touch on that at all. That was like, you call it the elephant in the room, you know. So we didn't, uh, <laughs> we didn't bother to discuss that in any, in any length or any, any time uh, during our meeting. But um, that may be part of why this has happened. Um, there's a lot of controversy in Ottawa all across the country on SNC Lavalin, uh, yeah, uh, the former minister and the the other minister, Jane Philpot, Philpot, you know, both uh, resigning and then and then both of them being ousted now from the caucus, so they're no longer uh, involved uh, to the degree that they, that they once were. So that may be part of the reason why he came here very quickly. And uh, he's a he's a Montreal boy, and uh, you know he's he was a professor at McGill, and he knows people from Ganawage, you know, and all that. So, there, on his part, he said it was his initiative to do so. So we didn't press him on that. Yeah, and and I guess one of the things too, if you're going to come to a First Nations community, coming to this one says a lot. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll put it, you know, yeah. and we know that. You know, in the political arena, all over. Yeah, you things know? of that nature don't happen very often, if at all. So really, it's kind of welcome, but at the same time, there's a suspicion. You know, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, you can't help it. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Come on. Welcome back to De De Batarda, part of Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Lent Stacy, and today is MCK Friday, and I'm joined by Grand Chief Joe Norton. And I guess prior to going to break, you, know, you mentioned a little bit about the uh, Jody Wilson Raybould uh, issue. Did, did, will that issue have any effect on us or any relations with uh, First Nations across the country or within the provinces? Or it, Because it's building up momentum, you know, and I just wondered, it, it, would it happen here? It, it will in one way or another. Um, I think one, one instance I can think of basically is, uh, is uh, what happens if there's a major groundswell by, um, by indigenous people in the country you know, to support her and, and go after the government of Canada, uh, more particularly the prime minister and some of his uh, cabinet uh, ministers. Um, what do we do? Right. Do we remain neutral? Do we remain, you know, I have some people already said, well, you know what? She joined, uh, she went into, you know, into a foreign government. Right. And, and this is the, the, the payback, you know, for, for doing that, which is, which is uh, a position that people can take. But at the same time, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of uh, creativity to do something like that. Get yourself elected and then become uh, become a cabinet minister, an important uh, uh, position such as the justice minister. I mean, besides the, the prime minister, the only other real uh, ministers with power is the minister of, uh, of finance and and then the minister of, uh, of justice. Those are your key positions, you know, and to, to have an indigenous person sitting as the minister of justice uh, could have and should have you know, turn a lot of things around, but you know, when when you uh, when you check the record, you know how much did it do? So I'm not being critical. I'm no, just no, no. That You're just stating facts. I mean, she's uh, she represented all Canadians. Yeah. You know, so she has to she has to be careful. Or it didn't matter whether it was her or another Indigenous person. They have to be very careful about what they what they say, what they do, and how they they bring you know. How they present themselves to Canadians in general can't be too overly um, supportive. I mean, she is deep down inside. I've known her for years. She she sat as a as a regional chief, yes, in, from BC at one point in time for many years. So she knows the landscape. Uh, she comes from a family, a, a political family, politicized family. Her her father, her mother, even her grandmother was uh, was very political in, in, during her heyday. So with that background, suddenly you get this position. She was a lawyer, still is a lawyer. Uh, so it, it creates kind of like a, a situation where, you know, sometimes you got to look at it. You can only serve one master, you know. And, yeah. And who is that, you know? 
and, and I guess I had to ask because I know, you know, you read a lot of things from across the country and everyone has a different stand in yeah. terms of engaging. And that was one of the things I learned throughout my years. And I've not been in politics, but still being in any sector, you hear it, you know, some jump in and engage and they vote and never understood our thing and i for me that was so foreign because that's not what we grew up with you yeah. know so kind of hard to uh, state what's a good way of, of doing things you know yeah so you you get to a certain point in time in your life like right now what we're doing and you have to begin to really look at and judge how effective you are right right you know in, in a position uh, that's you know quote unquote uh, a creation of the federal government or the, uh, you know, the Indian Act, so on and so forth. So, I mean, people are entitled to make their comments and right. accusations uh, uh, to that degree because to an extent they are correct. Yeah. You know? But in more recent times, in more recent years, the whole goal has been to remove ourselves from the Indian Act and have traditional government uh, replace replace what uh, what exists now. So, you know, for me, it's continue to do that as much as you can. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, coming within the community, are there updates that you wanted to, to share? And you know, um... Yeah, last uh, I think it was last week I was in Ottawa for uh, a two-day session, or, or no, two weeks ago, I think it was, two-day session with the Iroquois Caucus. Um, and part of it was to discuss the caucus itself, its makeup, and, and the, um, I guess the mandate, the relationship, uh, amongst the communities, not just the communities who are part of the Iroquois Caucus, but also with organizations such as the uh, the AFN, you know, and, and the position that was taken many years ago um, that uh, the AFN does not speak on our behalf, uh, and but there is there is a common relationship that had been established. We agree to work together as much as possible, but you know they can't go out there and proclaim. To represent us, so that's been a standing um, position that's been taken, and we've adhered to that as much as possible up to this point. But as individual communities, we are free to go and and participate in their activities too, because it's beneficial to us at these uh, at these major assemblies that are held twice a year, once in once in uh, in uh, at Christmas in Ottawa, and then in July somewhere in the country in the summer the summer assemblies it's a gathering time in which people from all over the country and the US come together you know both uh, politically as well as socially and for economic reasons and there's also exhibitions that go on you know and there's merchants that are there so it's really a, a major major get together that's beneficial in one way or another you know we were in Vancouver last year. Uh, we had the opportunity to um, display um, the proposal, the project that we have, that we're that we're that we're pushing here in Ganawage, and that is the um, the uh, indig national indigenous uh, uh, data center. Okay. So we had a we had to set up a booth there, you know, and everything like that, and people came around to see what was taking place between Bell. Uh, not Bell, but uh, BlackBerry, uh, Microsoft, and a company called Forest Green, who was the original, the originators of, that uh, that I became familiar with, and we decided to go that route. So um, there, there is that kind of uh, format where you can attract a lot of people to come, and from a commercial point of view, right, uh, be able to uh, have people, you know, come on board with what you're what you're doing. There's that side. Then politically, there's all kinds of different meetings that go on. Besides the main meeting, there are other meetings that we usually get invited to for any part of the country. You know, it could be Ontario, it could be uh, could be uh, uh, the Maritimes, it could be out west, Western Canada. And there's a lot of people I've known over the years that I talk to. You know, there's dinners at night, there's receptions, there's all kinds of things that are going on that. Uh, that uh, we get invited to and participate in, so you learn a lot about what's happening in the country by going to these to these events, which is helpful to bring back home to be able to talk to our own people and say, "Do you know what they're doing out west? 
You know how far ahead they are in certain areas? We're way back here. We're not doing more than we should, you know. Um, so so let me ask you a little further. What would some of those areas be that's a little bit different? Because in some areas we're ahead and in some areas we're not. So what are some of the things that we could be doing better? Um, well, in uh, economic development, but unfortunately we don't have some of the natural resources that's, that, yes, okay. that others that's have, a, yeah. you know, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, you know, in the mining industry, in the in the timber industry, oil exploration, because there are major native companies out west yes. that are involved in oil, in the oil industry, you know, and they support the idea of pipelines and that, where others are against that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there was an announcement, I think, last week that there was a meeting that took place in Ottawa, and you had a group of chiefs from out west who came together who said they wanted to buy that national pipeline that Canada had just purchased, you know, for several billion dollars. And I assume they have accessibility to that kind of money. So you you get to you get to understand what people are doing, how they're raising funds. There's a lot in the gaming industry that's happening. Um, on the land based casinos and you know, and we find out and we hear how there's a lot of dissatisfaction uh, because of the fact they have to get a provincial permit, right? And the per, and the province claws back, you know, they, it keeps going back, to, uh, keeps going up, the claw back that they take, you know, it starts at it started at like fifteen percent, now it's twenty, it's twenty five, thirty, it's going up, continues every year because the provinces need need the money. So in order, in order to be able to um, to exercise the right to have a casino. And to you know, gaming and race funds, the province says, well, you, it's going to cost you. So, you know, so that's the kind of thing that's happening. And there's uh, there's there's just a whole wide range. Uh, even the cannabis industry, yeah, there seems to be a lot more happening with native people. It's just my perception out in Western Canada uh, in the cannabis industry. Although it's right across the country, it's it's happening. You know. So we get a chance to talk to people, and people make presentations at the assembly itself, and they talk about what's going on. And as a spinoff from that, uh, I get invited, and Chief Gina Deer also gets invited to these other conferences that are taking place separately from the AFN yeah. assemblies. You know, so there there are things that are going on. Hey, Oscar Domino and Dana Asa FM, Kahnawage is with the homes today. Welcome. This is Kahnawage's K1037. I'm wondering um, through these discussions, do you um, um, hear a lot of the things that you hear here in this province? Is it the same or is it different? Or And, and, <clears throat> and that's what I'm curious to know, like on a political, because it seems to me that we have such a wide variety of needs in all areas no matter what part of the country you go to it's always that little bit of difference to have a different political uh look at you know things to have a different cultural look at things and i just wondered you know well the um we'll call it the political provincial political landscape yeah has a lot to do with um with how uh the indigenous people are going to react or the kind of positions that they take there was a lot more uh cooperation uh, but it's still ongoing a lot more cooperation between the province and the indigenous peoples although there's a lot of problems too right 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 you know because there's a battle over over uh the resources yeah the resource side of thing the 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 um indigenous people are saying you know that's our resources it's in treaty areas it belongs to us etc provinces and uh and the um, the uh, the mega companies they want to they want a share of that. Now, by law, they have to negotiate. They have to talk to these people. And sometimes, it, it, the, some people are dead set against any yeah, yeah. any kind of um, development. Others are saying, okay, uh, we want our fair share of it. You know, so you're going to find different types of uh, approaches. Here, we don't have the same situation. Um, but what we have is 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 a different a different uh, type of setting, and that is, you know, we have to look after policing on a major scale, the highways and all that stuff. We have to do the uh, the patrolling of that. We have to provide the kind of uh, uh, services that are required, ambulance, you know, and, and emergency, all of that. We do all the snow clearing. We do all that stuff. 
and we constantly have to worry about you know the railway that's here the seaway that's here uh hydro hydro lines you know and the highways 132 138 yeah. traffic issues other territories and more more often than not don't have to worry about that they don't have the same problems no. with traffic backed up from montreal you know all the way to the uh, all the way to Shattagee, you know. Yeah, yeah. And one way, then the other way, all the way to uh, you know the um, uh, highway thirty. Highway thirty, yeah. you know, traffic yeah. like that. They don't have those issues. Ours is much different than theirs, so we have to be vigilant. We have to be on our toes. We have to be constantly talking to Department of Transport, talking to Quebec. Who's responsible for a lot of the problems that? That are created with us, you know, policing. We have yeah. to have much, much more um, vigilance in terms of policing because right across the river and even around us, you know, they we're like within striking distance of, uh, you know, four million people, something like that. So there are these, these, uh, these issues. So it has to be whether we like it or not. We have to have a relationship with surrounding police forces, you know, RCMP, SQ, SPVM, I think they're called now in yeah. Montreal, yeah. And, and that, you know, so um, we may not like it, but we have to do that because, we, you know, there's criminals, the elements that come into the community, and we know that. They've been here for years. They know it in Montreal, you know, we know it here, so what are we going to do about it? Can't always handle it by ourselves, so we have to handle it jointly. In other parts of the country, it's not the same thing. No. You know, so the, uh, I'm not saying there's not crime, there's no, not no. drugs and all that stuff, but. Different it, priorities, yeah. I guess would be. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not on the same scale no. as, as it is here. So let me ask you on the other part of it, uh, what are some of the areas that were ahead, you know, in, 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 in some things that people, when they're looking to Ganawage, what are some of the things they're coming to ask? For, I think the, us? Po the political stances we've taken. Um, give you an example in the in the uh, what we're calling now the um, uh, the citizenship sector um, to to uh, to her credit uh, Gus Nahawe, uh Sky Deer has has taken the lead role not only in Ganawage but nationally you know and, and she's called upon to make presentations uh, and she's done that throughout the uh, throughout the Iroquois Confederacy. Yes. She's gone to various communities, made presentations to uh, to those uh, and explaining to them, you know, what the circumstances are. And the reaction has been very good in terms of, okay, let's do something together. And there will be something that will happen jointly, you know. Yeah. We just hope that everybody here, you know, regardless of what your belief is, whether you're traditional or non-traditional, will participate. You know, we, we, we spoke to the... Mohawk Trail Longhouse not too long ago. We had an evening meeting there, and Gus Nahawe got up and made the, made a great presentation to uh, to the parties that were there. We're hoping to do the same thing with 207, so to get a sense of you know the the urgency of joining forces, you know, to take a stand. And that's what's happening gradually across the country. So we've taken a lead role in that particular area, which is basically you know it's it's the future. Uh, absolutely, yeah. the future. So that's one example, you know. And then our political stances that we take in terms of, you know, pushing back government, federal, provincial, whatever they may be. Um, the, uh, the issues of uh, hunting, you know, we have a lot of people who hunt here all over the place. And others within the, um, within what we'll call the Mohawk uh, communities. Recent case out in uh, New Brunswick got involved. We pushed for... Uh, uh, to protect Mohawk hunters who had yeah. gone out there, who had, who had their equipment seized, who were being charged. We pushed them and said, this is a constitutional issue. This is what's going to happen if we go to court. Suddenly, New Brunswick dropped the charges. So now we want to do that right across the country. Because Talk it to, keeps happening, yeah. right? Talk to everybody, because our people go all across yes. the country. They're in Manitoba, they're in Saskatchewan. They go all the way out to B.C. to hunt. And then they're out in the... Um, in the eastern part of the country, too, in the Maritimes. Yeah. So, you know, at any moment, any given moment, that could happen. It could be hunting, it could be fishing, you know, and they're being invited by the other the other nations to come participate in their territories. So we have to be on top of that, you know, mm -hmm. so that our people can go free and clear. And the same thing, their people can come here. Like, there's a, there's a, 
We've been working on an arrangement with the uh, the crees in James Bay. For some reason, the geese don't go back up to north. It's they don't. not a good sign, eh? No, it isn't. <laughs> they're they're in this region here, all the way up to like the outskirts of Toronto, down into to Quebec City. They're 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 in this area, and and what they've what the crees have asked is if they can come and hunt within our regions. You right. know, it's not just Kahnawake. Yeah. It's it's other uh, the other Mohawk communities, especially like places like uh, Aquazosne yeah. and uh, Tyndanega. You know, they're right in the the midstream of where these uh, these uh, these the geese come and where they stay. So they're asking for uh, you know reciprocal types of uh, agreements arrangements, and then our people can go up in their territory and hunt for moose and. That would be ideal. Yeah. So we're we're getting that's on the table uh, for discussion. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to De De Watarda, part of Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Len Stacy, and joining me today for MCK Friday is the Grand Chief, Joe Norton. I had a question from a listener, actually, and what they wanted to know, what is going on with the seniory land claim? Because it seems to be building up more and more, or are we distracted by the topics like cannabis, S3, meanwhile, all our land is being consumed? Um, that's a good point that's made there, and I and I have to be very straightforward about it, because our point of view, the way we want to come to some kind of arrangement, uh, and it's not it's not a um, it's a grievance that we filed with Canada, and Canada has accepted in that uh, in that context, uh, while others file land claims, and we're saying if it's a grievance, then it's something that. Uh, that should be handled very differently from normally, the way things are handled, under the, um, what, are they, what are they called? There's two categories of land claims. One is the comprehensive, and the other one is specific. Comprehensive meaning the bigger, you know, bigger types of, uh, of land claims, and specific is very small in nature. Well, as far as we're concerned, our, our grievance does not fit in any one of those categories. And Canada has been attempting us to attempting to squeeze us in one of those uh, situations, so we've had to say no. Now let's be creative. Let's find another, because this is one of the biggest settlements that will ever be made, you know, in this country. And they're deathly afraid of that of setting a, a, a precedence, pre- right? A precedent, yeah. And and you're right. While this is happening, there's all these, you know. They're starting to encroach a little bit more and more. So we've uh, we've actually said we may, you know, we, we we want Canada and to a degree the province to step in and say no more, you know. Or we'll do this on our own, and maybe that's what we should be doing now, is going out and saying to everybody, if you're if you're going to build or do something on what we what is known as scenery lands, our territory, beware that's unsettled land. You might be buying into or developing or doing whatever it is that you're going to do on our territories. You know, so there's going to be questions that we have to put in the minds of people. Should I be doing that? That's why you still see a big, huge swath of land that's wide open. Okay. And uh, the boundaries of, um, of the municipalities around us have been uh, have been set for a while but they haven't done anything the only thing that's intruded on there is highway 30 yeah you know but that was done under duress when uh, you know when the <laughs> they had the guns pointed <laughs> at us very little we could do about it but that's that's we still have to deal with that yeah that still has to be something we got a lot of work ahead of us but it is a good position that we're in as far as I'm concerned and we can make life fairly miserable for anybody and everybody, if we start going out there and, you know, announcing, advertising, putting on our billboards, you know, you're on, uh, you're, you're, this is, this is Mohawk territory, you know, uh, the scenery territory, whatever, whatever way we used to approach it. We've even talked about utilizing uh, the media to get out into, into, um, into uh, internationally, internationally announcing, you know, if you have any thoughts or ideas about coming into Quebec, Montreal region, be aware, you know? Yeah. Be aware of the circumstance. So there is ways to hold, to uh, fend off 
further encroachment, while at the same time, you know, optimistically, it might be another five years before we make any headway. And that's optimistically, you know. Because it's been a very slow process. Oh, yeah. Very slow. It's over 400 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, that is slow. And, and I mean, you can't get any slower, but it seems like at some point it, it comes up, gets a little more active, and then all of a sudden, you know. Well, we've challenged the government of Canada by saying, look, you know, four years ago, the prime minister got up and said, you know, one of the... You know, one of the one of the most important things to him is the relationship between Canada and Indigenous people, and also this all this other, if you want to call it BS about the reconciliation. You know, and and then you have the um, you have you have UNDRIP that that was uh, adopted by Canada as part of makeup of their law now and all that stuff. Yet here we sit and we got this big chunk of land, right, which has been. You know, under much um, debate for 400 years, it's gone through the it's gone through the French regime, it's gone through the British regime, and now it's into the Canadian regime. You know, so let's do something about it. But you got to do the right thing. So it's not sitting on a back burner somewhere. No, 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 still, no, no. There's no, it's still. There. It's there. I, and, and I think part of it is it's hard sometimes because there's so many other big topics that are happening. You know, some of the ones that were mentioned, the S3 yeah. is a ginormous one. You we know? have, a, we have a, a table, canada Ganawagi uh, Relations, um, in which a, a part of that is dedicated to the scenery. But it's achingly slow. Like it's, you know, I mean, uh, they want to go every over every word, you know, that they, they want to put into an agreement. Right. And then, uh, and then it has to pass through the cabinet. Cabinet has to get approval. Before. There's all processes that has to go tr- on their side. We know what we want. It's very clear. This is it. You yeah. Know? You know, and, and uh, nothing less than that will... Will do. Will do. Yeah. And it's not about money. No. No. It's about the land itself, the use of it for our people. Okay. Money is important. And if, if we're going to get a, some money, sizable amounts for that, with that, then, you know, that's fine. But otherwise, you know, and Canada's position is in situations like this, it's like more or less, uh, you know, surrender. Surrender and we'll give you money. Right. You know, and then you can buy back some of the land. Because that was an argument in, in El Gwazasne. Yeah, it's the same is. thing. It still is. It you know, still it's, is, a, it's yeah. a big controversial Give it issue. up. We'll give you money. Then you can buy back. X number of acres or whatever it is. We're not going to do that. Yeah, because and then they charge triple or whatever, so you don't even have the money to cover it, right? You you threw in uh, S3. S3, yeah. What's important with that is that if the numbers bear out in the future and we're unable and we're you know, going to be battling that, those numbers of people coming back who have no relationship or no understanding, uh, they could push for and say, you know, let's get the land back but let's take the money because their numbers will count. Yeah. So we have to find a way to fight off history and at the same time maintain the integrity of the scenery, you know. In, so it's not an easy balancing no, act. You no, know? no. And then you add to that, there's also border crossing, which yeah. is also just as big, you know, or if not bigger. And you hear of problems on a weekly basis. Yeah. You hear of... Uh, Actually, there's a meeting coming up in Niagara Falls. Uh, it's on the American side for one day. Then on the Canadian side, the next day, uh, it's on border crossing. It's a major gathering that's going to be taking yeah, place. Yeah, because it's important, yeah. too, that like that, too, is a, is a big issue that, you know, we yeah. have to stay on top of because for some people, it's their livelihood, you know, of going yeah. back and forth. And for us, there's no border, but they still harass people. Yeah. You know. I had a, qu- a comment from a listener. Uh, when MCK has band meetings, is it possible to put it on the radio? The person is blind and cannot go to band meetings, but would like to participate. And it's just something to add. And uh, if it could be maybe brought out, I it don't know. It is possible. I think we did that once before. I don't. I don't remember. I'm trying it. to remember. It's, it seems like we had gone down that that path, and it is possible again to. Uh, uh, to do something like that. And maybe it might engage more people to come out and come to meetings. I know that's been kind of a sore point and, you know, participation. Forever. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I'm going when I was young and going and then just stop because, it, you know, it was the same thing over and over. It never seemed like we got ahead on something, mm-hmm. you know. 
And that's going way back. That's not just now. <laughs> uh, any other topics you would like to um, share or give some updates on some other yeah, things and, you're involved uh, with? <clears throat> uh, very quickly, uh, without going into too much detail, I mentioned earlier on about the um, the relationship, the business relationship, and I call it a relationship because first and foremost, that's what you have to have uh, with uh, with Forest Green, a company from Toronto. Uh, Microsoft, a major development corporation, uh, uh, a, a major technology company, and BlackBerry. Another, they n- don't really make phones anymore, but they're into security systems. Oh, okay. So uh, we're we're working on on a proposal, and we're you know we're we're down to the uh, we're down to the nitty gritty about uh, establishing a national data center, indigenous data center, here at MIT, because it's already there, you know. And that may, <clears throat> it's not going to displace the gaming industry. Okay. Because we have a lot of hope in terms of where that's going to go quite soon. But it will use the same platform, the same facilities, um, in which we will have, um, and we're, there's already agreements and interests that we're working on Monday I'm going to Toronto to meet with the uh, Chiefs of Ontario and put a proposal in front of them. They've asked for it. Uh, Anything like their education uh, data, all their information for education, health health, uh, services, social services, anything where they're storing data somewhere. Okay. Uh, But a lot of, most, in, in all instances, it's off the territory somewhere. Here, we're offering them an opportunity to have a secure environment in Ganawage. Um, The MIT data center facility is the only, what we're calling, uh, sovereign data center on on, uh, on, uh, indigenous lands. There's nothing like it anywhere else. Even in the U.S., we've done a lot of research. There's nothing out there either. So we feel, and it's a selling point because people are, are saying yes, we agree, because um, they've asked the question, can the provincial governments or can the federal governments or can the banks or can, you know, anybody who wants your information, can they go and demand it from that's you? That's what I going to be my question. <laughs> and that's the point. They can't. Okay. We won't allow that. So that's a major, major selling point to them. That's why it was important to be in Vancouver last year, to display, to, to show what we have, and then to describe, you know, what the benefits are to come and establish your information it's, uh, and, and protect your data in a secure uh, environment. So that is, that is going to be uh, a major, major push in this community. Uh, and also what happens is, as a result of that, there's so many training opportunities that have to open up. They will be, will be they will, then to, will have to then start uh, being involved to degree to be able to uh, provide these training programs. As a matter of fact, we're having on the on the 26th of this month um, uh, at the survival school. I don't know if they know it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> they will after the, today. Had, so, <laughs> but we've had people talking about having a one day ninth grade um, uh, like a workshop. Okay. To provide information on you know what this is all about, we have. Uh, we're, we're going to have the president of um, Microsoft Canada. We're, look, uh, we're looking at the president of uh, BlackBerry to come and participate. Uh, we've got, um, I think we've got uh, sort of on the hook at this point, the former prime minister of Canada. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Canada Steamship Lines. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I forget. Former Prime Minister. He's in Montreal here anyway. Uh, anyway, he will he will be there also because he's heavily into education now, indigenous education. Oh, okay. You know? He's taking a major step in that particular area, him and his, him and his two sons. See, I don't, I don't remember his name. And <laughs> you know he has sons. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember either. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, like, we've got that kind of uh, uh, presence and participation on the 26th uh, here. 
okay. to put on this workshop and to show the great ninth graders. And we're looking at actually, there's even interest of having um, participants come from across Canada. Paul Martin. Paul Martin, yeah. Thank you, Gannett Dedio. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You get to an age where your memory goes. All the way but from... But you two guys didn't remember either, All right? the way from Arizona. <laughs> yeah. uh, Martin, thank you, too, because it was it was a tie, but Gannett Dedio just beat you under the wire. Y'all Gannett Dedio. So there's, um, there's that that sort of initiative, and this is, this can, can become and will become I may, will become a major center for uh, data information security. You know, AI, artificial intelligence. So, can I just it. ask, like, through all of this, who would actually have access to it? Like, so, say locally, it's education information. Any, we could tap into that stuff as a, as a community, or we're talking larger scale data. Yeah, you can you can have. Uh, it's like, we want it to know stats. How many? Yeah. From. Um, 2000 to now, how many went on to CJEP University? How many are working in what fee? You know that yeah. kind of data. It's not only that, but it's it's also on the side of health. Yeah. Statistics: How many people have cancer? Yeah. You know. Yeah. The types of cancer too, without giving names or anything like that. You know, because the uh, the protection of people's personal uh, information, identity, and all that is the ultimate. You know. Yeah. The ultimate. Uh, uh, security purpose, you know, so that's why pulling people together like that and they feel secure because right now, and, and the ownership of the data too, Yeah. In, in different parts of the country, you know, the province claims to own it, the federal government, because we pay for it, so it's ours. And and you know? what's interesting, you're talking about the health field. I've worked in that field for over 20-something years, and we never had access to data. Yeah. Very limited. So when you tried to build programming around data and where we need to go, you know, if there's rates of cancer, what type of cancer? Where is it coming from? Is it is it environmental? Not everyone has that information, and that has been, I, I guess, a little bit of a sticking point, you know? And this becomes a very important tool for our people, our professionals in all the different uh, uh, sectors that, yeah. that uh, protect that environment, that, that information, and or are, are uh, in a position to distribute it to individuals who want to know personally themselves, too. Yeah. Mm, sounds like an interesting venture, and it's really oh, yeah. nice to hear that um, the young people will have an opportunity maybe to go in that field. Well, you know, start looking this, now. This you is know? where the education system in Ganawage, parents have yeah. to start thinking about that. Because if we wind up having, you know, just off the top of my head, two, three hundred employees or people who can become professionals, yeah, where are they going to come from? For sure. You know, and to me, I'm looking here. Yeah, Let's ideally. start them young now and start directing them into technology. It makes me think of a commercial I keep seeing across uh, media uh, outside, uh, math and science, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it's true. Math and science are important, not like years back. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, My Grand pleasure. Chief, uh, for coming in and giving us some updates. Coming up on Monday, Lisa Phillips will be in because April is Cultural Awareness Month, and we're going to continue with all of our activities. Up next with the 1 o'clock news is Kathleen Speckard. Have a great afternoon and a great weekend, everybody. Go Mohawks, go. Hold on.